Hey, what's going on YouTube? WhitehawkX here. Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I thought we'd do a tutorial on how to apply mods to Bloodborne on PS4. Now, as usual, this tutorial assumes that you already have a basic understanding of things like how to jailbreak your console and how to install PKGs on it. So for this one, we're going to be doing the 60 frames per second patch by Lance McDonald and the first person mod by Garden of Eyes. So if we go inside each of these, we look at the 60 FPS patch, we can see we need version 1.09 of the game, which is the latest update. This should work on any region. Um, for today's tutorial, I'm going to be using the US version of the game. So if we look at the first person mod now, it says this mod is compatible with Lance McDonald's 60 FPS patch. Use Lance's patch first. So all right, we know that both of these will work together. So that's good. So now if we come over here, I have my game right here. You can see we have version 1.0 and update 1.09. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is extract update 1.09 since that's what we need to work with. So we're gonna have the fake package tools right here. And we're gonna do Orbis pub check. And then we can just drag and drop this over. Since it's an FPKG, the passcode should be all zeros. We'll say extract. Select all files and directories. And then we are going to put this in the same folder. Start. So this will take a few minutes. It's an eight gigabyte update, so it'll take a little bit of time. I'm going to have a zip in the description of the video that has all the mods that we're using today, as well as the tools that you're gonna need to do everything that we're doing. So you can look for that if you haven't already. And I'm going to skip ahead till this is done. All right, so we got our update extracted now. We can close out of this, we no longer need it. And you can see we have an image zero folder and an SC zero folder. So why don't we go ahead and get this done right now. Just copy everything in the SC zero folder. We're gonna cut it. And we're gonna put it in the image zero folder and the SCE underscore sys folder. Just paste everything in here. All right. We can delete this folder now because we no longer need it. And then go ahead and rename this your Kuza number followed by dash patch. Just like that. Now, one thing that I want to go over is if you look at Lance's README real quick, let me pull it back up. You'll say you'll see it says you must supply your own decrypted copy of the eBoot bin. Now, when you dump a game, the eBoot is decrypted. However, when you compile it into a PKG, it turns the eBoot into an F self, and it's no longer decrypted. So, with that in mind. If we were to try and patch this eBoot right here, let's copy it over here to our 60 FPS folder. If we were to try to patch it, it's not gonna work. It says the file size is not correct at all. I can't work with this file. So something's wrong and we need to fix it. So what we need to do is we need to run it on a program called unfself. So what we can do is you got your eBoot right here. Just drag it on top of 
the unf self. We're going to unf this thing. Press any key to continue. All right, and you'll see you get a new file, eboot bin decrypted. So go ahead and delete your original eboot bin because you no longer need it. And then rename this, take the dash decrypted off. Like that. So now let's drag this back over. And I want to talk about something else too. There's two versions here. There's a 720p and a 1080p. You absolutely want to use the 720p version if you want to run anywhere close to 60 frames per second. Um, there's been tests done by like Digital Foundry and the 720p runs really well sometimes you'll get dips to like something like 55 frames but it runs really well the 1080p version if you do that you're only going to get like between 30 and 40 frames per second and it's going to fluctuate real heavily and you're just going to have a bad laggy experience the main reason that the 1080p version was even created was in hopes that it would be useful in the future and what i mean by that is if for instance the ps5 gets a jailbreak then the 1080p version will be useful. But because we don't have a jailbreak for the PS5 yet, we want to use the 720p version. So let's run the 720p. And there it is. It's already done. Applying mandatory patches. The patches were applied. Enjoy your game. So this eBoot here is now patched to run at 60 frames per second. So now we need to run the first person mod on here. So let's look at the README. It says you need a program called diff patch WPF. Download and extract the files to where your Bloodborne patch files are ready. So you're going to run this application. You're going to put your eboot bin in file one and the first person patch text in file two and hit patch. Here's the first person patch text. All right, simple enough. This application is also, like I said, included in the zip that's in the description of the video. So let's open this up. So we're going to put our eBoot into file one. So it's in, oops. right here this is the one that we patched with the 60 fps patch so we'll put that there and then in file 2 we're going to put this bloodborne first person patch .txt and then we'll say patch done file saved in our first person folder all right so we can close that And here is our eBoot that is now patched with 60 frames per second and the first person mod. So rename this to just say eBoot bin. Copy it back over to where your update patch is. Replace the one that's in there. Now we're not quite done yet. You'll see there's a also a DVD root underscore PS4 folder. So everything that's in here needs to be copied over to your patch folder. Just replace everything that's there. All right, and now we're good to go. And lastly, something that I always like to do is I like to edit the change info XML. So I always do the base one and 01 for English, but there is no 01 English, so the English version will just read off of the base one. So we can just edit this one file. So we're on version 1.09. So I'm going to add two more lines. And then in the first line, I'm going to say 720p, 60 FPS patch by Lance 
McDonald. And in the next line, I want to say first person mod by Garden of Eyes. So we'll save that. All right, so now we are ready to build our update PKG. So we're going to open the FPKG tools. We need to generate our GP4 first. Let's double click that. Navigate to where your update folder is. Click OK and then say generate. Now this might take a couple minutes. So if it does, I'll just, you know, work some magic and fast forward ahead. All right, so now that that's done, we can save our GP4 file. We can close out of this now. And now we need to open Orbis Pub Gen. So we're gonna go File, Open. There's our GP4 file that we just created. Double click on that. And now we need to designate our base game. So we're gonna go Command, Project Settings, Patch. And it's already got mine selected, but if yours doesn't, just say Select. And then you wanna navigate to where your base game is. Double click on that and say OK. So now we're going to build this. And I'm going to leave this the same and just add at the end dash mods. And then we're going to say save, build. So my audio turned out messed up while recording with Orbis PubGen open. So I've gone ahead and closed it out since it's finished building the update package with our mods. You can see that I've got that right here. So now I'm just going to transfer it to a USB drive and install it on the PlayStation 4. I'll see you guys over there. All right, everyone. So now that we're on the PlayStation 4, let's install our update PKG and check out our mods. So you come over here and go settings, debug settings, game, package installer, and there's our update PKG with our mods. We'll click on that to install it. Now this is eight gigabytes, so it'll take a few minutes to install. So I'm gonna just fast forward ahead so you guys don't have to wait. All right, so now that our update PKG with our mods is installed, let's go check everything out. If we press options and go to update history, we can see where we added to the, the change XML. 720p, 60 FPS patch by Lance McDonald, first person mod by Garden of Eyes. And right off the bat at the title screen, we can see evidence that our 60 FPS patch worked. If you look in the bottom right corner, it says this 60 FPS patch was made with love by Lance McDonald. So now we know that's working. So let's start a new game here real quick. Oh yeah. We'll skip through all the cutscenes. So as you can see, we get a few items right off the bat. The Great One hat is what's going to allow us to be in first person view. So if you don't equip it, you can play through the game in third person view just like you normally could. However, if you go into your options 
and you equip it, it now switches to first person view. Now there's a bit of a hiccup with this where your body armor shows up. So honestly, you can't really wear body armor. So if we unequip that and we wanna equip our gloves, now we can play in first person view. We'll go ahead and die so we can go to the Hunter's Dream and get some weapons. So now if we equip our weapons, you can see how everything looks in first person view. I know that Garden of Eyes said that he had to edit the way weapon animations look so that it didn't look janky in first person view. I personally played with this mod up to the Vicar Amelia boss fight and it's worked great. You have great control over your character. It's just a, a new way to enjoy the game, and I highly recommend everyone at least check it out. So yeah, there's our update package with our mods installed. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. If you did, it really help me out if you uh, like the video, and feel free to subscribe. I plan on doing more tutorial videos in the future, so you can look forward to those. Thanks, everyone. Take care.